Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this video we're going to continue the series on creating, recording and mixing a song inside Reaper itself. So in this video we're going to take a look at moving on to the third part. So now that we've covered the basic elements of our song recorded, it's time to move on and start tweaking everything to get us in a great position to start mixing. So in this video we'll be looking to swap out those initial guitar tones for something a little more permanent. We'll also be adding some effects to our signal change to smooth out the bass, EQ the guitars and finally get some basic levels before applying some polish to the master track. So let's take a look at how we do all of that right now. So I've got the track open in front of me and first up let's take a look at working on those guitar tones. Now while easy mix presets sound great, I want a little bit more flexibility in my sound, something I can shape more should I desire. So for this we'll be using a commercial plugin from Mercurial and specifically the U530 as this gives us a great tone to the overall guitar and provides us with a great tool set to work from. Now if you don't have the Mercurial plugin, don't worry, you can get amazing guitar tones from commercial plugins like Amplitube or Bias. And if you want free options, there are some amazing options out there. So take a look at things like the Le Pouf LE456 or the Lebrit, as well as other options from Ignite Amps. There are literally tons of great options that should suit all budgets and musical tastes. Okay, so let's start shaping those guitar tones. So when I'm working on shaping guitar tones and different instruments, I like to work in a solo track so I don't have any distractions, just to allow me to shape the sound roughly where I want it to be, then I can deal with EQ and so on, and put it back together to get an overall rough idea. So to do that, all we're going to do is come over in this example to guitar left, we're going to solo that out so I can only listen to that, we're going to open up the effects panel, and what we're going to do to start off with is remove the instance of Easy Mix, and we'll just jump down to the effects browser and we'll go through to Mercurial and make sure that we've got the U530 in there. And I just literally drag and drop that onto my interface. So now that we've got that open, the next thing we can do is start shaping our sound. So let's take a look at doing that. Let's just set a few of the parameters at first of all, making sure I'm on the right channel. So what we're looking to do at this point is just get a rough mix, a rough sound for the guitar tone. And then we can adjust it as we go along. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go through, play the track back, and just get a sound somewhere near where I want it to be. Okay, so that's a good starting point. The next thing I want to do now is just listen to that in context. So let's unsolo the track and let's take a listen to what that guitar sits like with the rest of the tones. Okay, that sounds pretty good. I'm liking where that is. Obviously the levels are out. But the next thing I'm going to do is do exactly the same thing to the second guitar track and make sure that we've got something that complements it. Now you're entirely up to you how you want to work with this. For me, I like to have some slight difference in the guitar tone so they don't sound identical. So you can make a choice really. If you like to have that identical guitar tone, then mix and match and do exactly the same thing on both tracks. Or if you like to have something a little different, dial your sound in just that little bit different, maybe a bit thicker, a bit more low end, whatever you want to do to give you the sound that you like. So let's just do the same again. I'm going to close that down, open up guitar right, remove Easy Mix and just drag and drop the U530 on there. Now obviously you don't have to use the same VST, you can use a different VST if you want to, so you get a completely different tone, whatever works. Okay, so let's go through now and dial the tone that I like in on this track as well.
So there we go. I've dialed in a slightly different tone, adjusted the, the speaker mic position so we get some slight differences in there. Like I said, the levels at the moment are a little too hot, so I've got a couple of ways I can deal with that. Easiest is probably just to come in and reduce the levels on those two tracks. So we just pull those back about three or four dB each just to kind of get a rough position where I want it to be. And we can have a little listen to that now, see if that kind of sits a bit better and just tweak just to see if I like those guitar tones, see if there's anything else I want to do to the track. Okay, so I can tweak that later on. Definitely takes some more time to make sure those levels are sitting exactly where I want them to be. But for now, that's okay. That's a good starting point. Next thing I want to go and make sure that I shape the sound by adding some EQ to this. So what we're going to do again, we're going to solo the first guitar track, go into the effects section, go down to our effects browser. And for this, we're going to use one of the stock plugins. So we're going to come to the EQ and compressors. And what we're going to do is we're going to just drag and drop an instance of ReQ on there. Now what this allows me to do is go through and visually see the areas that I want to deal with. Now with most guitars, now this is again not a hard and fast rule, this is just something that generally tends to work, it's a good starting point, is that you want to cut any frequencies that are lower than 50 hertz because they are just sub bass frequencies and the reality is that's where your guitar, sorry, that's where your bass guitar and where your kick drum is going to sit. You don't want to muddy that up by adding in guitar tone. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off on there. So we're going to make sure we've got the first band selected. I'm going to come in and we're going to say we want to put a high pass filter on there. You can see that now rolls off at around about 50 hertz. We can adjust that if we want to and tweak it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull up the guitar tone, make sure that's soloed out, and we're going to start listening to that and adjusting and tweaking the overall signal. Okay, so now we've dealt with a lot of the low frequency that's in there. We've made sure that there's none of that sort of sub bass frequency. Next thing you want to do with is whenever you have a distorted guitar, especially if you're using an overdrive distortion or specifically a fuzz, you're going to get those harsh fizzy tones, which are kind of like around the 2 to 3K mark, and they just tend to be a little bit too fizzy and horrible. They're kind of not a nice tone. So what we're going to do is we're going to deal with those next. So we're going to choose the second band. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag that over to where I think the problem area is going to be, which is normally around about this kind of area, the 2 to 3K. So once we've done that, we're just going to come in and we're going to set a boost. We're going to take this up over what we would want to do, because what we're going to do is we want to overemphasize it, and then we're going to scan across the frequency range and find that frequency or frequencies that stick out like a sore thumb because they're horrible and harsh frequencies. So let's just drag that down a little bit. We want to narrow that. So we're going to end up with a shape that kind of looks like this. So let's boost that gain a little bit higher so we can really emphasize those frequencies. And now we're going to play it back and we're going to scan across the frequency range just by using this slider until we find a tone that really does stand out as being horrible. So let's play it back. And what you should hear when you do this you get a high-pitched, squealy kind of fuzzy sound. And those are frequencies that, even though they're overemphasized, they're frequencies that will build up and really create a horrible fizzy tone to your guitar. If you're dealing with metal, guitar tones, distorted guitar tones, you really don't want those frequencies in there. So once you find the frequency, then what we do is we literally grab the gain and reduce it. So we're going to take it and we're going to cut that frequency out. If you think it's a little bit too harsh, we're covering too much of that frequency range, you can adjust the bandwidth on there to either contract or expand. Now, we don't want to go crazy with the cuts on this. A few dB is usually more than enough to deal with it. So let's listen to it before and after. So I'll boost it up and then we'll cut it so you can listen to exactly what's going on. So let's just put that gain back up. I'll scan around a little bit so you can hear it and then we'll cut it. So you should immediately hear that that changes the characteristic, those higher fizzy tones in the guitar tone. Now normally you want to cut maybe two or three different frequencies and if you need to add more points in there you can do that very very easily. You can see we can simply add a band. We'll keep this pretty straightforward. 
So I'm going to go through and choose band three, and I'll do exactly the same again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the gain, lift that up, reduce the bandwidth so we don't have too much of an area being covered, and we'll just boost that a lot higher. And I'll scan over that frequency range and find any other frequencies that I think are quite horrible and fizzy. So same process again. So hopefully you can hear the differences in there. Obviously I'd recommend using studio monitors or a set of headphones so you can really pick out the differences because your computer speakers are not really that good. They're not going to show this in the way that you want it to. But that's kind of where we want it to be. I would normally spend more time doing this seeing as additional frequencies that I really want to cut, but the process is exactly the same each time. You may find you also want to give it a mid boost if you think that you're kind of lacking a little bit in the sort of mid tones. Feel free to adjust and tweak and Get the tone that you want. Getting the EQ right at this stage can make a massive difference to the overall mix. Now, there's one thing that I'd always recommend if you can. It's always better to use subtractive EQ as opposed to additive EQ. So what I mean is, as you can see with this, instead of me boosting frequencies, it's easier to cut something and compensate. So instead of boosting frequencies where you start to make them more prominent, it's easier to find the uh, sort of offending frequency in the opposing instrument and cut that out to allow shape and space for those frequencies that are kind of being swamped to start to shine through a good example of that is when you're dealing with a kick drum and when you're dealing with the bass because they inhe inherently use the same frequency response areas you tend to find that if you let them build up you can get a very very woofy sound and really lack any definition in either the bass or the kick so the easiest thing to do is find the frequencies where you have that overlap and then cut one on the instrument that you want to sort of fall back so an example, you might want the kick drum to be a little less prominent and the bass to stand out. Then cut the frequency in the bass without needing to boost it too much in the kick drum or vice versa. Because once you cut it, you allow space for that other frequency to shine through as opposed to building up where you've got multiple instruments sort of taking up the same space in the frequency range. Hope that kind of makes sense. So once we've done this, we've done the first guitar. So what I'm going to literally do is I'm going to pause the video, go and do the second guitar, and then we'll A, B it with and without the EQ. So you should very quickly be able to hear the subtle differences that allow the guitar to just sound a little bit better. Okay, so as an example, let's take a listen now where I'll turn the EQ off. You can listen to that with no EQ on there, like we had it when we recorded it, and then I'll turn the EQ on. Now, none of these things are going to be massive, but what it's going to do is it's going to reduce that sort of low-end flub and it's going to deal with some of that fuzziness and that fizzy, horrible, high-pitched tones that you have around the 2 to sort of 3K mark. So let's have a little listen to that. So we'll do a before and after. So you should notice now that we dealt with that low end woof and we've just dealt with some of that fuzziness as well. So that's the guitars roughly where I want them to be. Next up, we're going to move over to the bass and we're going to take a look at just applying some simple EQ to that as well. So let's just drop down to where our bass track is. And for this example, I'm just going to literally put the EQ curve on the loudest part of the bass, the distorted version, which is really low in the mix. I'm not too bothered about because that's going to kind of sit there and just add some distortion to the low end. It's not really going to make too much difference to the actual frequencies that we're dealing with. So much the same as before, we're going to click, open up the effects panel, and we're just going to come down to our effects browser. And we're going to do two things on this. We're going to deal with the EQ. So we're going to drop an instance of that app on there. We're also going to use a compressor on there as well. Now we're going to stick the compressor right at the beginning before anything else because what I want to do is I want to make sure I can control and tame that sort of input signal where there's a lot of dynamics in a bass, especially if you're using a pick. It's a much more dynamic instrument than you have when you're playing guitar, especially distorted guitar, because that kind of just smooths things out a little bit. So let's deal with that next. Now to start off with, I generally just use one of the presets that ship with Reaper itself because I think it's a great starting point. So Let's just open up the presets and we're going to look down and we want the spanky or driving rock bass, whichever one kind of works with the style of music you're working with. Now I'm going to use the driving rock bass. And as you can see, that sets the parameters in there. 
Are they perfect? No, but they're a good starting point. So they're the kind of thing that you can use this and then you can tweak and adjust because obviously everyone's playing is different. Some people play a lot more dynamic than others. So you have to control that. So let's take a listen to this now and we'll just tweak some of the settings for how quickly the e so that the compressor comes in and deals with any of the dynamics. So what I'm doing is just literally adjusting the threshold which controls how soon the compressor kicks in. So because this isn't an overly dynamic piece of playing, I don't have to worry too much. There's not a lot of sort of strong attack and a lot of sort of light subtle picking going on. It's all pretty much even. But just smoothing out a little bit by using the threshold. And we're finding there's about a 2 to 3 dB on average kind of reduction going on at certain points in the bass track. So I'm going to leave it there. I might come back in later on and tweak this to get a little bit closer to, you know, getting exactly where I want. But for now, it's a good starting point. So next up, we're going to jump over to the EQ and we're going to do one simple thing on this. What I do is going to come into the presets and what I want is the bass low pass. Once I do that, you can see that puts in a low pass filter, which cuts out any frequency pretty much above two and a half K and a nice sort of gentle slope. So this means that that particular part of the bass is going to be really thick bass with no real click or sort of pick attack or anything like that that's coming from the higher frequencies. We kind of kill all that. Mixing that with a distorted bass tone really gives a nice sort of underlying groove to the track. Now I've covered this in a lot more detail in a dedicated track on recording a bass. So if you want to take a look at that, I'd recommend checking that. It's going to give you a lot more detail on what we're kind of doing today. Put a link to that in the description below. Okay, so we've got this roughly where we want it to be. So let's just take a listen now to the, the full bass track with nothing else in this. So this is just the bass track soloed out with the EQ'd and compressed version and the distorted version sitting underneath it. So let's have a listen. So sounds pretty smooth which is exactly what we want. We don't want a huge amount of dynamic range in that bass. So let's now take a listen to this where we've got everything put together. Now, levels haven't been adjusted on this, so the drums are still going to be a little bit all over the place, but it's going to give you a good idea of what's going on. So let's take a listen to that now. Make sure nothing is soloed out. All looking good. So now let's take a listen to where we are. So it's sounding pretty good. It's getting closer to where we want it to be. So one more thing I want to do before I wrap up this video, and that's where we're going to put an effect on the master track that really just kind of boosts things and tighten things up. And I generally tend to do that at this point because it means that I get closer to a polished mix and then I can sort of see or listen to the discrepancies, the things that stand out and sort of jump out at me as the things I want to deal with. You know, the kick drum might be a bit too loud or there's certain parts in the song where I want to dip something. So it kind of highlights those things for me and allows me to pull those things together a little bit tighter. Okay, so we're going to be using one of the instances of Easy Mix on this. So what we're going to do is come up the master track on the left-hand side. And we're literally going to click at the top. That opens up one of the brackets. And what we're going to do is we're just going to literally go in and find Tune Track and drop an instance of Easy Mix on there. I've got this set of my favorites, and the one that I use is basically the Metal Masher 2 from the Mastering 2 preset pack. This is going to tighten things up. It's also going to boost the level, so you can see what it does is it literally puts in an EQ and a compressor. That's it. So it EQs the track, gives it a sort of little bit of a tighter sound, sound, and also mashes it down with the compressor. So we flatten the frequencies out just to make it all kind of sit in a more even position. So let's take a listen before and after. So this is before. So it sounds okay. But let's put it on now and take a listen to the difference. Now, obviously, you're going to get a volume difference because this boosts the volume quite a bit. But that's not the only thing it's doing. <laughs> so 
So hopefully what you can tell there is it doesn't just boost the volume, it tightens things up, it gives you more sort of mid and high range to sort of make it a lot more dynamic, a lot more exciting sounding. So it really does boost things. But you can also use this, like I say, to pull out areas that you kind of think, well, that's a little bit too prominent or that's sort of sitting too far back. And you can kind of identify things closer to where they're going to be at the end. That's just the way I work. You might prefer to do it a different way where you leave this sort of overall track polish until the very end entirely up to you but that's kind of where i'm going to wrap the video up for now in the next video we're going to take a look at doing some of the tweaks to the audio itself so things along the lines of where we've got passages in the audio for the guitar parts for example that there's no guitar playing you can hear a little bit of noise background noise from where the guitar is a little bit sort of hot we're going to cut those things out we're going to make sure everything is nice and neatly time aligned so there's no real discrepancies in the playing because no matter how good a player you are you will always end up with slight timing differences between takes so we're going to deal with those so we can pull everything together and make it sound a little bit more polished and tight. Well, there we go. I kind of wrap it up the video at this point. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And as always, happy mixing.